Well, if you've been out walking around in your landscape or garden the past few weeks, enjoying the nice cool weather, and you've noticed some strange little holes dug up in your soil, you're not alone. Many homeowners throughout the state of Oklahoma are noticing the same thing. And the culprit that causes this damage is the armadillo. And with us today on Oklahoma Gardening, we have Mike Shaw. Mike, welcome. Glad to be here, Steve. Mike is the big game biologist with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. And we're going to visit with Mike shortly and find out a little bit about armadillos and what we need to do to learn how to identify them, where to locate them, and how to control them. That's right. And again, Mike, we talked about these little dug up areas in the soil. And you'll notice here we've got some under one of our shade trees where our soil is a little bit loose. And Mike, what are the armadillos doing when they're, they're digging up holes like this? Well, Steve, this is the most common type of damage that you see. Just uh, they're rooting around trying to find uh, food. Uh, most of the diet of, of the armadillos uh, is insectivorous. They eat uh, almost all kinds of insects and invertebrates, earthworms, crickets, uh, and this time Ants. of year, grubs are the big grubs are, favorite. Grubs are a real, real favorite this time of year, right? So, do they use their teeth to dig, or what, what's their best mechanism for defense and for trying to get their food? Well, they primarily dig with their front feet, which are well equipped with fairly good claws, and they'll also use their, their nose. Uh, they have a very good, uh, well developed sense of smell, and they use their nose to locate the food source underneath the soil and then they'll go up and, and dig to expose it and uh, they have a fairly uh, long tongue that they can then insert down into the, into the hole and gather up the food that way. Now I found it interesting in visiting with you a little bit earlier, you said they really have a good sense of smell. Yes. Uh, they locate their, their food primarily by a sense of smell. Uh, of course, lo being located underneath the soil, uh, uh, sense of vision doesn't need to be very well developed and actually they have a very poor, uh, poorly developed sense of vision. Uh, uh, you know, they're not, they're not blind but they can't see very far at all. Right. And now in our <coughs> gardens here we see damage in our Bermuda grass lawn and our fescue yes. and really though they like areas with a lot of organic matter where there are more insects. So right along in our area where we've put a lot of grass clippings and the soil softer, that's where we've been noticing a lot of the, the symptoms. Right. Now, it's more of a nuisance than anything, isn't it, really? Yeah, it really is. Uh, anybody that lives in a, well, uh, an urban environment or even, you know, out, uh, you know, at, at the edge of a, a timbered area, um, you know, if they're trying to maintain a nice lawn or, or flower beds and you have this kind of damage and you run your, your uh, wheelbarrow through one or you step in a hole or, or something like that and it just makes a, creates an unlevel lawn and it's, it's And occasionally in our raised beds we've had some of them dig up some of the plants in Even there. in the raised beds. Even in the raised beds. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of a mm -hmm. uh, concern too. Well let's talk a little bit about control. Uh, I think a lot of the homeowners are probably already thinking, well, if they're after insects, we reduce the population of insects and that, that would take care of the problem. What do you think about that? Well, that would be certainly one, one method of control, indirect control. Uh, it, it may or may not be effective. Uh, of course, uh, in doing so, you'd also be eliminating a lot of the beneficial insects right. in your lawn too, so that may not be the best method uh, of control for this particular species. And a lot of the everyday chemicals that you might be aware of at the garden center, such as diazinon and durazban, are labeled to control insects in the soil. And if you choose to go that method, make sure you water First of all, to try to push those insects up a little bit higher, follow the directions. But as uh, Mike has mentioned, that's not always an effective way. So let's talk about some other controls. And there's really not any repellents or poisons. And you made an interesting statement earlier, too, that if someone was to use a poison in the burrow or anything like that, they could also be killing other uh, animals as well. Poisons would probably be the, the least desirable means of, of control uh, because they are nonspecific and, and you may end up with a critter that you didn't intend to kill. Such as a family pet or yes, something. Yes, yeah, a cat or dog. Or, okay. Yeah. Well, we've talked about controlling the insects and some poisons. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the armadillo stays in a burrow, and, right. and that's its home, or possibly just from hiding. Right. You mentioned, too, about burrows. How would people look for a burrow, and what would they look for to identify their home? Well, armadillos have a fairly small home range. Uh, uh, normally, they don't get over about 10 uh, acres, and usually it's much less than that. So. Primarily, you'd want to look for, uh, for holes that would be seven to eight inches in diameter, uh, and they would generally be located at the base of a rock pile or, or a compost pile or a tree root or, or something like that, sometimes in the burrow or in the side of a terrace. Uh, and these could be anywhere from uh, oh, five to, to 10 feet long. And, uh, so an interesting control, if you can find their burrow, you mentioned was, was trying to gas them out. Yes. Why don't you tell us a little yeah. more about that? Uh, well, of course, one of the things is they may have more than one burrow, so you, <laughs> you need to locate the one that they're, they're going to be residing yeah, in, right. and uh, so usually they'll have one burrow that they live in and several others for escape. But you can generally uh, tell if they're in the burrow by inspecting the entrance, and a lot of times if they're in it, they'll plug it with some sort of vegetation or leaves or stuff. And if that is the case, uh, then of course you could use... Um, uh, carbon monoxide from your lawnmower or a garden tractor or something like that to eliminate the problem. I think our viewers are familiar with hearing that in controlling moles and, and pocket gophers, which really that is not feasible because of their range, but for an armadillo it is more realistic yeah. if they can find the burrow that they're in. Mm -hmm. right. Well, our last control I think we want to talk about is trapping them, and mm -hmm. we happen to have a live trap here, and let's go over here now, okay. Mike, and and uh, talk about trapping. Uh, we've got one here that uh, he's going to show us a little bit about how to set and tell us, you know, all the details on it and, and as far as the size and that kind of thing. Okay. Well, this is a have a heart trap, and there are many other brands with uh, similar trigger mechanisms. Uh, this one here is not of a size that would be effective uh, for an armadillo, but the basic construction and the trigger mechanism is pretty much the same for all so of them. So it's too small. We this one's to... too small. Yeah, we need one that probably would stand uh, about twice this size and, you know, again, about twice as big. Right. Our armadillos can weigh up to about 15 pounds. They're a fairly good sized animal. What kind of bait would we use in something like this? Uh, probably the most effective, of course, is to use the natural food. Uh, if you could get crickets or, or earthworms or, or that sort of thing. Uh, put them in a small canister like a margarine container and uh, just dig a small hole under the trap uh, and kind of make the, the margarine container level with the soil and that way it wouldn't interfere with the treadle mechanism for, for springing the trap. Well, you know, I just recently came from Florida and down there some of the recommendations were the same thing using crickets or mm -hmm. grubs or earthworms but wrapping them in pantyhose and I think they've heard us say <laughs> pantyhose or something they need to get for the garden so that's uh -huh. one thing that we could possibly sure. use too. That would probably work. What about dog food? Uh, I would suppose that they, they might eat that. I've even heard that you know you could use overripe fruit because they do take some berries and, and fruits in their mm -hmm. diet too but I think probably you would be a little bit more effective if you went with uh, natural. approximated the natural mm -hmm. food. Okay, so once we get the food in there... Uh... This trap here has just got a, a, a simple uh, treadle inside and it, and it has a, a series of wires uh, which then hook together to raise up these, uh, doors. these doors and you just set it with the, with the treadle like that and make mm -hmm. sure that these are up, up top on the, on the door mechanism. And that's to keep it from coming back out to right. lock it in. And then uh, it's a very simple procedure. The one Settle is trip. These go down, and the wires hold the doors down. Uh, and again, the other traps are work very similar to this. Well, the last question, Mike, is once we've trapped our armadillo, what are we going to do with the thing? Well, uh, you can do one of two things. Uh, once you determine that it's the armadillo that you've got, and, and not not your pet cat or, or other something something else, some other non-target species, uh, you can either kill the armadillo. Or you can, if you don't feel like you can do that, uh, you can just take the armadillo, leave it in the trap here, and stick it in the trunk, and, and drive out fairly, you know, at least five miles from your house and release it somewhere. Right. And you mentioned killing the armadillo. It is legal to hunt armadillos and kill them as well in your own property. But yes. what are some words of advice for people in an urban situation? 
Well, many municipalities have, uh, have laws regarding the discharge of firearms, so you need to check into that. You don't okay. want to be going out in the city limits and discharging a firearm. You may have the police at your back, at your back door. True. So you just need to be uh, cognizant of, of you know, any, any laws pertaining to discharge of firearms in the, in the city limits. Well, Mike, I appreciate you coming and uh, visiting with us here about armadillos and giving us ideas on how to identify the damage and how to control them. And we hope you'll uh, come back maybe in the near future and talk mm -hmm. to us about some other wildlife problems that we might have in I'd our be happy garden to do that. as well. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.